Hi guys, Sandro from Conveyor Randomness here, and today I'll be looking at this, the Sony A5000 camera. This is the Sony A5000 compact system mirrorless camera, showcased by Sony in 2014 to replace their existing NEX 3N camera, marketed as the world's smallest and lightest interchangeable lens digital Wi-Fi camera, the A5000 has a 20.1 megapixel Exmor APS-C image sensor, the same Bion's X processor that you'll find in the Sony A7 and the A7R that reduces noise at images at higher sensitivities. It supports all Sony and compatible E-mount lenses. The 16 to 50 millimeter lens comes as standard with the camera and the additional lenses that I've purchased the 55 to 210 millimeter lens and this 75 to 300 millimeter third party lens. At 210 grams, the camera is very lightweight when comparing it to something like the Nikon D 3300 camera and only about 20 grams heavier than an iPhone 11. It has an impressive ISO image range of 100 to 16,000, which is more than the Nikon D 3300 and many other cameras at its price range and above. The onboard Wi-Fi and NFC makes transfer connectivity and remote control in the camera via the Imaging Edge mobile app simple and removes the need for a computer if you're looking to transfer them straight to your phone. You're also able to download apps via the Play Memory Store to add different features to the camera from a more of a software point of view. With its 180 degree flippable LCD screen, you can tilt the screen to view what the camera sees, particularly important for those of you who like taking selfies or doing vlogs. Unfortunately, no swing out LCD like you'll find on the Sony ZV-1, but another good use of the flippable screen is that it allows you to get those high or low composition shots without you actually getting all the way down to the ground or high up, and with this solid ergonomic grip with its dimpled surface supported by the conveniently positioned buttons and dials can make those awkward shots a lot easier. Each of the directional keys around the dial can be customized to add any functionality which is more useful to you than the default ones. Unfortunately, the A5000 doesn't record in 4K as like in many new cameras and phones, but it does film in full HD at 1080, 60i, 24p and 30p. Depending how you process your exported files from the A5000, I have encountered a few compatibility problems with the raw images and the AVC HD files when I've transferred them directly from the camera to my iPad. To me, the built-in flash seems a bit flimsy and I rarely use it, often opting for my own external lighting. It's brought out with the press of a button above the LCD screen and arrives with this clunky thud. It's either too bright with the fill-in flash or not enough. The microphone in this camera isn't the best either and together with the flash you really notice the lack of a hot shoe mount and its ability to connect external accessories like a mic or a flash which really limits what can be done. But in order to, for this camera to be considered as budget or starter camera then those drawbacks are understandable. I do like the zoom capability when you're filming or taking a picture. It can be done in three different ways. The first way is via the zoom lever on the top of the camera around the shutter button. The second way is via the zoom ring around the lens. And the third way is via the zoom control on the lens. This gives you that flexibility with your content creating. The battery this camera uses is the MPFW50, which is rated to have the capacity to deliver approximately 420 shots, which is why in addition to this one that came with the camera, I have two additional compatible spare batteries, which are obviously very capable, but don't last as long as the originals. The A5000, like other Sony cameras, suffers from overheating, either through overusage or recording for an extended period of time. You'll notice a considerable temperature change, particularly on the rear side of the LCD screen, where the camera just gives up and you're not even able to use it until it's cooled down sufficiently. The menu is conveniently laid out and split into sections depending on what changes you want to make. I always find it's worth having a play about with settings on any piece of tech when you first get it, just to give you that um, familiarization of the device that you're using. One thing I do miss with the A5000 is a viewfinder. I bought this camera originally because of the lack of a viewfinder, but there's only so much freedom that you can have with just an LCD screen. Just like any other camera, there are different modes to choose from. The i5000 has nine different modes, from intelligent auto to aperture priority to manual mode. These allow you that creative flexibility depending on your level of expertise. You can take things a little further by exploring manuals or books to help you get even more out of the camera. You're able to play around with creative picture effects such as toy camera, 
mono, high key, retro, partial colour and posterization, which are things that you may sometimes do in post with other cameras and computers. So to have these features at your hand allow you to experiment with other things other than the basic contrast, brightness and saturation for example in the camera itself, it's definitely a plus point. It charges via USB and has a micro HDMI slot which facilitates the A5000's only method of expansion allowing you to transmit to an external display. But to do this you'll have to purchase a micro HDMI to full HDMI adapter. It also supports external storage and is compatible with SD, SDHC and SD XC memory cards alongside Sony's own memory stick duo cards. One unfortunate thing is that the Sony A5000 is no longer supported by Sony firmware updates, but that doesn't matter as it won't stop you from doing something that the camera isn't already capable of. It makes the A5000 feel like the camera prior to all the advanced features that are present in its predecessors, the A5100 and the A6000. So let's go and see the A5000 in action and I'll show you some of the photos from the camera and compare it alongside other cameras. comments below what you thought of the images. This camera was Sony doing what Sony does best, making cameras capable of producing great images. It's good for people who are into blogging with its LCD screen and at its price it makes buying it attractive. Yeah it would be nice to have an LCD screen that flips out to the side or an incorporated touchscreen element and be able to add external accessories but this small conveniently sized camera is a perfect as a startup camera and an introduction into the interchangeable lens cameras without being this large piece of equipment but instead something the size of a compact camera that could easily fit inside your pocket or in a bag. The camera's full of compromises that have been put in place to keep this camera within its place in the market and attractive to the entry level user. The range of Sony E-mount lenses is increasing all the time and although they can be very costly don't let their price tag put you off. They provide the cameras great stability and autofocus, which add to the whole system's excellent price to performance ratio. The A5000 is more of a point and shoot camera rather than a filmmaking camera. It's a good compromise between digital and SLR cameras with no frills or necessary or redundant features. You may think that its menu can be cumbersome, but once you've mastered them, you've got a great little camera on your hands. Sure, this camera and its position have now been eclipsed by cameras such as the Sony ZV-1 and mainstream smartphones, which are perfect for today's blogging and content creator. But to me, this was my first introduction into the interchangeable lens marketplace, and it's been a great camera to use and improve my skills with. From its 20.1 megapixel sensor, it's going to give you great quality pictures. If you want a very small and lightweight, powerful camera for a great new or second-hand price, then the A5000 isn't going to be a bad choice. It's a camera that keeps things straight to the point and is good at what it does. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if you're new to the channel, a subscription would be greatly appreciated. And press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.